Hey guys, welcome to episode number 494. Today is Monday, so it's update Monday, and I am standing in the truck of Greg Roberts, the Driftwood Man. You can check him out at Driftwood for Aquariums, and uh, he sells driftwood to pet stores and wholesale, and drives up and down the coast, delivering driftwood basically all year round maybe a little bit less in the winter time but the majority of what you're looking at here except for some of the stuff in the back the majority of this stuff is red cedar and this stuff is similar to Malaysian driftwood in the fact that it is fairly heavy fairly dense wood and uh, it almost sinks by itself. Uh, the larger stuff will sink basically immediately. Some of the smaller stuff needs a little bit of help uh, to sink immediately. So some of these are attached to uh, pieces of slate here. But given enough time, uh, all of this stuff will sink and uh, makes a great addition to your aquarium. He's got a lot of different sizes here. He loads this truck up. Um, basically all the way full and uh, drives it around until all the pet stores have basically bought him out completely. You'll see this wall is almost empty and all of these ropes tie very large pieces of driftwood to the side of the box truck um, so that they're secured for transport. So uh, he's up here in Massachusetts right now. He's almost done with his trip. You can see we're, uh, we're sort of like you know getting towards the empty side in the truck and uh, this stuff is some really interesting stuff so a lot of people are, are familiar with Malaysian driftwood uh, but red cedar is actually something that's native to the US so this stuff can be collected and uh, as you can see some of these are even a little uh, a little wet a little damp because uh, you know they haven't completely dried out yet um, but a lot of character to this wood very very interesting stuff you can tell that some of this stuff is very old has been underwater for quite a long time and uh, there's a lot of variety in the uh, the shapes and sizes of this stuff you can tell some of them are uh, stumps here and you've got the root structure uh, others are, are probably uh, more branchy like some of the smaller stuff is uh, more branchy but all in all very very cool stuff um, collected from the wild, underwater, alligators, all kinds of crazy stuff. I'm sure he has plenty of stories to tell on um, you know how all this stuff is collected and uh, how long it takes. But essentially, you're sort of uh, thumbing around underwater. Uh, you can't even see what you're doing, and you're just sort of feeling around. And when you find a piece of driftwood, uh, you pull it up, pull it out of the muck, and uh, put it on put it on board or bring it to shore let it dry out and uh, then eventually it's uh, ready for sale so some very cool stuff here we've got some smaller pieces out front um, again a lot of these have quite a bit of character to them uh, smaller pieces are a little bit more branchy a little bit more twiggy I like this stuff here and then as we get into the larger stuff it uh, you know it starts to be more stumpy in nature so anyways I picked up a piece of this red cedar and uh, we'll take a look at it in my aquarium in a while we'll see how long it takes to sink but if you are in need of driftwood for your aquarium and you are a pet shop or you buy wholesale he's the guy to talk to he's got the driftwood Again, most of this is red cedar. He also has Malaysian driftwood and uh, more and more stuff coming in all the time. All right, and we are back in the fish room with our piece of driftwood that we picked out. Again, this is red cedar and uh, there is quite a bit of debate on the internet as to if cedar or red cedar is safe to use in aquariums. And uh, typically what people say is uh, softwoods and uh, any aromatic woods uh, are, are typically ones that you want to avoid. However, um, that doesn't necessarily hold up 
um, in all circumstances. And I think the biggest thing to remember and consider is how old some of this driftwood is. Uh, some of this stuff has been underwater for hundreds of years and any of the aromatic oils or antifungals or um, you know properties that are not um, wanted in an aquarium have long since leached out uh, in a piece like this. One of the uh, things you can do if you're concerned about it is if it's a fresh piece uh, I would completely avoid it. If it's a piece that looks well seasoned and weathered like this you can try to cut a piece off and on the inside sometimes uh, you know it's a little bit fresher and you might be able to smell uh, some some aromatics uh, like you know the cedar smell and uh, you know if, if that happens you might want to avoid it but this piece I can tell you without a doubt has been underwater for a very long time you can tell because of the rounded edges uh, on all of these roots uh, a lot of the you know the small pieces the fragile pieces have broken off many many years ago and all that's left are the uh, the rounded stumps here and uh, for that reason I'm not too concerned uh, about putting this piece of wood uh, in my aquarium it is a rather hard wood it is rather heavy you do see that it is floating uh, this thing was almost completely dried out uh, when I purchased it and I expect within a couple weeks it will begin to uh, sink you can see some of the uh, splitting lines there and uh, that's that's a sign that the wood was underwater for a very long time and then it was taken out of the water to dry uh, that's when you know the wood starts to split like that so uh, you know that's a sign that it was dried fairly well uh, before I purchased it. it it's something you can probably find on a lot of the driftwoods that you buy uh, especially if they were actually underwater for a very long time and then uh, harvested or dredged uh, from the bottom and uh, brought up on land and washed off and dried off but anyways guys this is the piece that I picked up uh, I believe the retail price for something this size is around fifty or sixty dollars it's almost too heavy to pick up with one hand so I'm just gonna leave it here in the water um, hopefully after a week or two it will start to sink and uh, maybe I can find a good corner for it uh, along the edges I really like the way that the uh, the roots sort of uh, branch out uh, in one direction so if I can sort of uh, maneuver this in a way where it sits kinda like this uh, I might be able to have part of it above water and then the rest of the roots sort of going into the uh, the sand substrate which I think will look pretty cool but anyways that's the piece of driftwood that I picked out uh, shout out to Rod from Flip Aquatics who originally shot a video, a YouTube video on Greg Roberts the Driftwood Man I was able to contact him and uh, that's how I was able to uh, get in the back of his truck and uh, pick out a piece of driftwood Anyways guys, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later.